G'day, I'm Damo, and this is CompNow's WWDC 25 Recap for Admins. If you're after user-focused info on new OS features and services, you've got plenty of options on YouTube. I will at least say it was great to see Shortcuts get some time in the sun. We've got heaps to cover on Apple School and Business Manager, Identity, App Management, and more, so let's get cracking. First, Apple School and Business Manager. Domain capture was a big item from WWDC last year, and more admins are thinking about managed versus personal Apple accounts. Apple School or Business Manager will soon be able to identify unmanaged Apple IDs on your verified domains, building on last year's domain capture functionality and allowing IT to proactively contact users to guide them through the process. You'll also soon be able to restrict device sign-in to only managed Apple accounts, independent of MDM. Definitely think this one through hard before enabling it though. It's a global restriction for all your devices and you can't yet do everything with a managed Apple account that you can on a personal one. Now, most MDM vendors have their own solutions for this, but now device management migration can be performed from ASM or ABM. Crucially, this happens without requiring a factory reset and has the ability to preserve apps. This definitely handles all the management priorities, but there's a lot of stuff you'll still need to cover, like the agents that MDMs install. E.g., if you're moving from Intune, Apple's process won't remove the company portal. It'll still be there spinning its wheels. Next, account-driven enrollments. They've been difficult for some organizations to use thanks to the need to host the service discovery payload on their domain. Now, you can use your MDM as a fallback for a simpler admin experience, hoping we'll see lots more use now it's easier to set up. We've got APIs for automating device assignments and queries in ASM and ABM, with endpoints for devices, MDM servers, and assignment and releasing devices. Interesting to note that these have been described by Apple as the initial set of endpoints. Looking forward to this functionality expanding. What's more, this is live now for you to start testing with. While setting up your API account in ASM or ABM is a breeze, generating the token to actually use it is a bit more involved, but never fear. Apple have a Python script in their documentation, and Bart Reardon of Swift Dialog fame has posted a bash script along with a detailed guide on his GitHub. On to device inventory. IMEI and other info has been available in ASM or ABM for some time already, and MAC address information for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth will be added later this year. Alongside those, we'll soon see device warranty info too. There are lots of homebrewed solutions to get this information out in the wild, so this will be a time saver indeed we'll be pouring one out for GSX pretty soon. Rounding out ASM and ABM, we get granular privileges for the device enrollment manager role and managed account support for developer services. Now let's look at identity, a rapidly developing space for all of us. We have simplified SSO setup, now before local account creation. The platform SSO pane appears first in Setup Assistant. This enables seamless device enrollment and account login with the user unable to proceed without authenticating. Plus, the user's profile picture can be synced from the IDP. Might seem small, but you know how much users love that stuff. It'll be interesting to see how MDM vendors and IDPs run with this. Major players still only have partial or preview support for much of the existing PSSO workflows, so this will remain an interesting part of our lives for a while yet. A heads up for our higher ed customers on this one, or anyone managing hot desk, shared, or lab max, we're getting authenticated guest mode. It supports guest login using SSO with user data wiped after logout. Exactly the sort of feature that would pair beautifully with tap to login. This is a way to sign into Mac by tapping iPhone or Apple Watch with an encrypted NFC access key in Apple Wallet. You'll just need an external NFC reader to use it. Device space access companies like Swift Connect are already working to take advantage of this new functionality in their products. For mobile, Enrollment SSO can download a required authentication app for SSO login as part of enrollment for more secure deployments. And rounding out identity, a deprecation warning. Kerberos SSO is still supported for now, but will be deprecated. Replace it now. On to some pretty significant changes in app management. It's going to Clarative 2. Install or pin apps to specific versions, configure auto updates, and restrict downloads on cellular. Education customers in particular might want to think how version pinning can prevent unexpected updates and lead to a smoother classroom experience. For Mac, declarative app management brings the ability to install App Store, custom apps, and package files supporting optional and required deployments. In mobile, we'll get managed app configurations. 
deploy passwords, certificates, and tokens securely, confirm user role with support for device attestation and hardware-bound identities. Let's move into device management, but stay with apps. Return to service won't wipe them anymore. It'll only now delete user data from the device, leaving all apps, which take the most time to reinstall prior to the device being ready to use again. And Apple Vision Pro now supports return to service too. More on that later. New file provider support will allow you to specify file provider extensions for syncing desktop and documents. This gives us a native way to do things like Microsoft's known folder move for OneDrive. For iOS and iPadOS, automatic reboot will restart a device automatically after a configurable idle time, enhancing security by putting the device into the before first unlock state. Edu admins, be careful that this doesn't disrupt Wi-Fi connectivity in charging carts. And there's some significant news with software updates. Declarative software update management now supports tvOS and visionOS, completing the transition for all Apple platforms. As a result, legacy MDM-based update management is going to be deprecated next year. Start replacing any effective workflows now. Safari config management uses new declarative abilities to push bookmarks, customize start and home pages, manage pop-ups, cookies, etc. And here are even more new features we didn't have time to go into detail on. Enhanced cont content filtering, temporary pairing of AirPods and Beats headphones, Network Relay now supports fully qualified domain names, iPad battery health reporting, and controls for messaging, calling, and connectivity to provide management of FaceTime, iMessage, and RCS cross-platform texting. Let's wrap up with a focus on Apple Vision Pro. Vision OS 26 allows us to manually add Apple Vision Pro to automated device enrollment via configurator for iPhone, and skip some setup assistant pains in ADE deployments. A good many Visions Pro were purchased without the ability to register at the time of purchase, mine included, so this is a big one for enterprise usage. As we mentioned earlier, you can now use Vision Pro with return to service to make sharing even easier. It can be initiated by the end user themselves via the control center or the lock screen. This now means that all MDM capable devices can be added to ADE with Configurator. Quick Start on Apple Vision Pro allows users with a personal Apple account to import their saved Apple Vision Pro setup data that they store in iCloud or on their iPhone, removing the need to perform hands and eyes setup. Finally, Vision OS gets full Apple intelligence restrictions and controls, just like the other platforms. And there you have it. Start testing now. Feedback on beta one is the most likely to be addressed, but don't just provide it to Apple. You need to be talking to your MDM vendor, IDP, security partner, etc., about their preparations too. And judge them harshly. Responses like, that's an Apple problem, or we'll look at it after launch, aren't acceptable in 2025. Remember those deprecations. Next year for MDM software updates and a future release for Kerberos SSO. You might not get any further warning, so update your workflows now. Thanks for joining us, and as always, contact your CompNow account manager if we can assist with any of your Apple device, identity, or security management needs. CompNow, IT built for you.